All right, good stuff. Well, guys, here we are, top of the hour uh, for contractor Q&A. What I would love you for you to do is like this, share this, do something to it, uh, because when we do it early in the broadcast, when you like and share it, the algorithms give us a little more love. They show it to more contractors, and we get to help more people. So much appreciated if you could do that. Petro, what's up? Um, <clears throat> had a great Monday. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for asking. So, and guys, uh, if you're on Facebook, make sure you grant Facebook uh, permissions, blah, 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 if you want me to see your name and uh, all that good stuff that I'm supposed to say. So guys, I want to, um, I want to start just by sharing some thoughts here um, about um, success. Okay. All right. Pop quiz. Get your thumbs ready. I'm dead serious. Get your thumbs ready. I need a yes or no in the box. If you were building a house, would you paint the walls before the drywall was up? Yes or no? Uh, would you paint the walls before the drywall is up and taped and sanded? Okay. Hopefully we got a bunch of no's coming in. All right. <laughs> so now you never know. You might get some whack job. Who's got a uh, different opinion on that, but guys, it is absolutely ludicrous, right? To think that we would paint the walls before the drywalls up or that we would hang the doors before the house was framed, or we would do the, I don't know, install it, install the uh, countertops and the kitchen cabinets, um, you know, before we um, poured the foundation. Okay. Pro Texas in Texas, there's a good chance that that could happen. That's funny. All right, guys, obviously, you know, it, it's a, it's an absolutely outlandish question that I asked you, as Mark said there, it's ass backwards, right? <clears throat> and so um, here's what I want to start with. And then go ahead and then we're going to dig into Q&A. Uh, so I'm not going to talk real long on this, but I want to make a, couple, a, a point here. So many contractors are on the hamster wheel, okay? You're doing this. I'm running, by the way, okay? You're doing this and you're not getting anywhere, okay? You're working your tail off. You're getting up early, your boots hit the ground, you attack the day, and you're addressing everything that comes in front of you, everything that comes your way, you're, you're taking it head on, because that's just the type of person that you are, right? Um, and then you finally shut some things down late at night, maybe you spend some time with the family, and then um, you're back at the computer working on your marketing, I'm probably writing a blog post or some content or shooting a video like I've told you to do. Um, you know, God, hopefully you're not typing up bids for people that you haven't pre-qualified, but some of you are. Okay, whatever. Um, and then you shut this thing down late at night only to wake up the next day and realize that you're in the same exact place you were the day before in your business. And those days stack and those weeks stack and those months stack, okay? And you're just like this on the hamster wheel, just spinning. This is not the latest dance move. Actually, we should have a dance move in the fight called the hamster wheel. All right, okay. <sighs> Enough comedy. Guys, here's the thing. Unless you do something about it, um, you are living in what I call your forever normal. You ever hear the new phrase, the phrase, the new normal? This is the new normal. Like you go to boot camp in the Marine Corps and for three months, that's the fucking new, new normal, right? That's your new normal as a Marine. Um, well, many contractors, maybe some of you, are living in what I call forever normal. And you just, you're going to have to come to terms with the fact it is never, ever going to get better. And the reason is this, one of the reasons, but a very big reason is 
You're trying to paint the walls before the drywall's up. You're working on things in your business out of order. Okay. Um, God forbid you read the fucking terrible book called The E-Myth. I know I'm probably gonna need a bunch of hate mail. Michael Gerber is gonna probably text me and tell me to fuck off. Okay, I don't care. All right, I get the idea of the book. All right, and it makes sense, but it only makes sense for businesses at a certain level. Most people read the book and they spend all this time in the early days of their business trying to set up systems when they don't have any fucking sales coming in. Okay, and again, it's just like doing shit out of order on the job site. <clears throat> and so, um, when we do things out of order, we end up on the um, on the hamster wheel. Okay because you're working your ass off. Nobody's doubting that you guys aren't working hard. Okay. But if you're not working on the proper things in the proper order in your business, guys, that's probably the biggest reason why you're not getting where you want to get while you're reliving the same day, same week, same month, same year over and over. I talk to contractors all the time and, and I'll never forget this was several years ago. One guy said to me, I've been in business 15 years and I have nothing to show for it. My 15th year looks exactly like my second year and my sixth year and my 10th year. Every year is the same. Okay. And that's because you're doing shit out of order. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, so guys, this is why I've decided to bring in, uh, my buddy, Mike McCallowitz for a workshop in Panama city, Florida in April. Okay. Now, if you don't know who Mike is, he is a world-class leader, speaker on business and marketing and for entrepreneurs. Um, he's been all over the media. He's written tons of books. If you ever heard of the book Profit First, which I know many of you have, he's the author of that. Mike's been on my, uh, uh, this week, we're releasing another episode on the show with him, which will be his third time on, on our show, the Contractor Fight Podcast. He was my second guest uh, way back in the day, and um, and we have him back every now and then. And Mike is going to be joining us in Florida in April and dedicating a whole day to help you dig into your business so that you find the exact one thing that needs your attention right now to move your business forward. So an analogy I, I should have probably been more prepared for here. Okay. Imagine, imagine, um, get, all right, get rid of the nail guns for a minute. You got a hammer, you got some nails. And you walk over here and you tap, start tapping a nail in to the, to the wall. And then you look over there and go, oh shit, I need a nail over there too. And you stop pounding this nail in and you run across the room and you start pounding that one. And you're like, shit, another one over there. Okay. And you spend the whole day, the whole week doing that. And you get home every night, you're exhausted. And all you have to show for it is a bunch of half set nails all over the place. You never finished anything. You never drove that one nail home. Guys, just like it's ridiculous to do things out of order on the job site like we opened this up with, it'd be ridiculous to just go around and try to tap in all the nails at one time on all these different types of projects around a home. Are you tracking with me so far or have I lost you? Good analogy, bad analogy, I don't know. But when I hit a nail, number one, I wanna make sure it's the right nail that's needed to pound in right now. And number two, I want to finish it. Okay. I want to drive it all the way in and, and just finish the task. Okay. And so I'm bringing Mike in. Um, we bring experts like this in, in from time to time, usually once a year and then at mile high in the, in the fall. So twice a year, I guess it is. And, um, and Mike is going to help you determine exactly what needs to happen in your business right now. Now, some of you have a gut feeling. My gut's really telling me that I need to work on this. My gut's trying to tell me I got to work on this. Well, guys, what if your gut is wrong? Okay. Now your gut can be trusted in some situations, but when it comes to building your business, like baking a cake or something, building a house, there is a correct order to doing it. No matter what my gut says, I'm not framing the house before the foundation is in. Okay. So like your gut could be wrong. All right. And guys, I've been on that hamster wheel before and it sucks. You know, you're grinding, you're pulling late nights, you're working weekends. 
you're doing the same things over and over and over and over with lackluster results. You keep winning or not winning. You keep living those same days over and over again. And when I did that, I'm like, okay, I'm doing all this. I'm not getting where I want to go. It was many years ago. Um, and actually not too recently in the or, uh, far away. Uh, yeah. Pretty recently in the fight in the last year or two. And um, so I did what most of us do. I worked harder. I got up earlier. I pushed myself more, okay, just to be disappointed in the same results because I didn't take a step back, all right, and really understand the natural order of, of growing a business and success. All right, guys, there's going to be magic in Panama City this April, okay? There's going to be magic. Uh, the lights are going to go on, boop, okay, for the people that are in the room. They're going to be forever changed, and they're going to have 100% clarity around what the exact next best step and the moves they need to make in their business are right now. All right. Um, there's a lot of powerful things that happen when you're in prox proximity of world-class leaders. Okay. When you get in the room with me, the fight team, Mike McCallowitz, other FWs, good shit is going to happen. Okay. Um, the guarantee here, guys, there's going to be some hot seats. There's going to be some, a ton of workshopping. All right, everybody in, in the event, all right, and this is a smaller event. It's not like four or 500 people like Mile High. It's much smaller. All right, you will be able to walk out of there. I'm just grabbing some papers here, okay, with a playbook, knowing this is what I got to do right now, all right, because you cannot do everything, okay? If your marketing sucks, your sales suck, you can't recruit this, you can't work on all those things at one time at the same time. All right. So you got to do things in the right order. You guys with me there? So hit the link, the contractorfight.com forward slash strong. Okay. Contractorfight.com forward slash strong. Get your fucking ticket. All right. Do it. Just do it. Don't be a wuss about it. Get down there and get the clarity that you need. All right. Now, if you have a business partner, if you have a spouse that works in the business, okay, whatever, those tickets are always half price in the fight for the events like this that we do. Those tickets are half price. All right. So you got your ticket here. And by the way, it's early bird pricing up until this Friday, uh, March 10th at midnight. Okay. So up until March 10th, you get the early bird price. Then your spouse comes. That's half the price. Okay. So instead of two of these, it's one and a half of these. Okay. Hopefully that made sense. All right. So go to the contractorfight.com forward slash strong and come hang out. So we have, uh, uh, the first night is a Monday night, um, for, I think it's the first 50 people that sign up and, and a bunch of these are already gone. Okay. Uh, full disclosure, but the first 50 get a dinner cruise, uh, out on the Bay or whatever it is there. Uh, the next day, Tuesday is an all day workshop with Mike. Uh, and then day three, is a, uh, what you might call it a, uh, beach day a networking beach day. The last time we did a Florida event was a year and a half, two years ago now, I guess in Destin and the beach day was incredibly powerful. The networking, the conversations you're having with other FWs is game changing. Okay. Myself, the other coaches, um, kick-ass members. All right, guys. So go to the contractorfight.com forward slash strong, do it before Friday. So you don't have to pay more than you need to pay. Okay. And get off your ass and take the shot and we'll see you down there. So that, with that being said, what questions do you have? It's Q and a now Q and a Monday. <clears throat> wow. I'm dry today. Um, Dana says that he lives close and he'll be there. Awesome, man. We'll hit the link, get your ticket, man. Look forward to seeing you there. Um, all right. Any questions? Any questions for tonight or about the event? How can I help you? My dad and I started, says Mac, our own company in January. Builders GCs, we currently work for another company. Full time and plan to go full time in our business one year from now. What is the best way to get to know our numbers with only a few jobs to start out? 
Um, Mac, I um, knowing your numbers is a funny thing because you're not going to truly know your numbers until you start job costing the projects that you do. So number one, I would just make sure from day one, if you're doing side jobs and stuff that doing this as a side hustle, first do everything on the up and up. Um, so you don't dig a hole for yourself. Um, job costs from day one. That That's the first thing. That's how you get to know your numbers. Like, are we pricing shit right? What are our production rates and things like that? Um, the second thing that I would say, um, and you choose the order you want to do this, but I would, um, I would join battleground. I really would. It's 19 bucks a day. Okay. And the education that happens in there is designed to help you when you're starting out like that, or you need to get shit together. And at the very least, if you don't want to do that, get our foundations program. I think it's a contract fight.com forward slash foundations. And it talks, uh, about overhead and money and how much, how to figure out what you need and all that other shit. So, um, Anyway, buddy, appreciate it. Uh, Facebook users asking me about our March marketing madness calls. I think all of them have been chosen. I'm not sure. There might be one spot left. We're still reviewing that. I don't know who asked me that question. Um, Dana. <clears throat> You're welcome, Mark. Dana asks, I, I got a web page. So what do I do with it? All right. Well, if you have a website that's properly built and optimized, it should be getting found, but you want to market that website. And so when you do a social media post, put a link to your website. It should be on your trucks, your cards, your yard signs, all those different things. Any, it should be in your email signature. Um, you, you know, it's, it's kind of a really hard question to ask because I don't know what your site is. I haven't seen it. I don't know necessarily what other marketing things you're doing. But one of the biggest mistakes people make is they have somebody build um, they build a website and then it just sits there and they expect it to generate leads when they don't realize that they actually have to keep, keep creating content on a regular basis. Um, that's relevant and helpful to their ideal client. So hopefully your site was built with language and calls to action for your ideal client. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then it's probably not. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I would, I would work on that, but you, you have to market it. It's like, if you write a, uh, if I write a blog or shit, we do our podcasts, we do these things, you see us promote them, right? So guys, if you're going to create something, you have to promote the thing. All right. Um, great question. Um, Chase. Mr. Salmon says we should, uh, battleground should be three times as much for the value. All right, buddy, I'll raise the price, uh, next month. All right, there we go. Um, <laughs> it's a conversation we've been having. Trust me. Or I I've been having, I keep getting outvoted by the team, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I will tell you that when we do raise the prices, notice when I say, when those who are already in will be grandfathered at the price that it is now. So it's probably good to get in now. Chase says, a starting GC, would you recommend going fully on your own or team up with another GC to learn numbers? There are risks to consider when teaming up. Uh, yeah, that's the absolute worst thing you can ever do. Um, because now let me, let me asterisk that. I'm a fan of partnerships. I'm not a fan of how most contractors do partnerships. Most contractors go, Hey, I got a business. You got a business. We should partner up and have a bigger business. When in reality, you're bringing two people that don't know their numbers, don't know how to sell, don't know how to market, don't know who their ideal client is together to make a bigger shit sandwich. So Chase, uh, and, and I, I did this. It worked out for me. So when I say I partnered up, I partnered up with a guy in my painting company many years ago, and it was a good thing. I was a strong company. He was a strong company with, we both had proven history we teamed up, we each worked in our own lane and we kicked ass. Okay. It was really good. Um, but what I often see is people partner up and guys, this is not meant to be like a, a battleground pitch. I'm just answering. I'm, I'm my own biggest fan with our programs as I should be. All right. I drop, I drop the money 19 bucks a day for the year. You get in for the whole year. It's $6,970. You get two months free. Otherwise it's 697 a month after the first 90 days, which is a whole different story. All right. Um, that's way fucking cheaper than getting, bringing on a business partner that may or may not work out. 
and again, not trying to pitch you. I'm just telling you when people start saying they want to partner up and all the lessons that come with that, uh, what they really wanted is they really, like you just said here with another GC team up with another GC to learn numbers. You can learn the numbers without giving away equity in the company and having two owner salaries and double the overhead and all that other bullshit. So anyway, um, renovations and repair. It's tired of full-time bookkeeper for job costing. It's a game changer. What else do you recommend? I sub out when it comes to the business. Well, I don't know about your business, but you know, it's like that, you know, CPA bookkeeper attorney, obviously, um, you know, if your renovations were in repair, your name is telling you, you might be doing remodeling jobs. You might want to, maybe you're a sub model for that. Um, sometimes a virtual assistant is something good. Your office management and things like that can be subbed out and hire, uh, you know, Roz, who's on here has been with me since I think 2015. And she started at five hours a week. And now she's been here full time for a few years now. And she's a massive, massive, massive uh, part of this company and the decisions that are made and all that good shit. So, um, yeah, Danny, you said your web designer definitely was, you should know though, if your web designer did not take you through a two to three week process of discovery of who your ideal client is, their pains, their pleasures, um, you know, ideal types of projects and then build your site with that in mind, then, then you missed an opportunity there. Okay. Um, Mark or Mac, I'm sorry. My next round of 75 hard. So I just finished live hard the whole year program. I finished, uh, not last Wednesday, the Wednesday before, cause I finished it, uh, the first day I spoke in Albuquerque at this painting event <clears throat> and I am now going to be doing 30 days of 70 hard, 75 hard once a quarter. Okay. So at the end of March, uh, I'm going to start another 30 days and then I'm going to go until we're in Florida for our event at the end of April. So that'll be 30 days. Uh, and then, so that'd be the second quarter. And then the third quarter, I'm going to do another 30 days and so on and keep going, man. You can, this is by the way, Mac, when people really screw up 75 hard, they get to day 50, 60, 70, and they think they got it made and they make a careless mistake. They forget to take a picture or some shit like that. So uh, stay vigilant about it, buddy. Good job. Um, how do you deal with a client that keeps changing their mind about asking for a new quote each time? Uh, that's called Shin Fu and consultation fees. Um, get them to pay for designs if they're going to keep changing their mind. Uh, again, I don't have all the information here, Mark, but um, uh, it, our Shin Fu pre-qualification process is designed to keep that from happening. Um, okay. Do I have to pay anything extra for my two employees if they add them to join the Agoge sales training since I have a membership? No, Jose and Battleground, it, it's the, it's, uh, there's up to four seats in Battleground for a membership. So just email help at the fight. Um, All right. Yeah. And Mark answered that question about the customer it keeps changing their mind. Make sure you get a paper trail. Do not start any work. Okay. Um, don't start any work without signatures and deposits and any change orders guys. Like I, I get paid. I used to get paid on our change orders the same way I got paid on a new job. So if it's $10,000 job, we're two days into the job it's a four day job and they add more work. So they add another five grand, whatever my deposit schedule was. Okay. So if it's 50% deposit, I need 50% of the deposit for the change order and a signature before we will start the change order work. Okay. Um, do you have an all-inclusive membership for everything you offer? Uh, great question. That, that's pretty much battleground. The only thing battleground does not give you are my private company workshops and, um, and one-on-one -on -one coaching that I do with multi-million dollar businesses. That's, um, that's a coaching package. That's usually it's 10 grand a month or more. And, you know, for me to come talk for half a day to a company, a private company, it's 25 grand and things like that. But aside from that, um, everything's in battleground. Okay. And you can bring up to four people. 
Yeah, Mr. Barber here says 100% on change orders. Yeah, I know some people that do that. Um, and, um, and, and let me, let me also say this, our CEO, Neil, um, built and sold his remodeling company outside of Chicago. I was one of his subs. If you haven't heard the story, he's fired me at least three times, but anyway, um, he, um, in Neil's sales process, when they were signing the original paperwork, they were doing these, you know, couple hundred thousand to 750,000 or whatever remodeling projects. <clears throat> he would literally sit down. I'm just looking at Mark Bunker's name. He'd go, Mark, are you sure this is the scope of work that you want? Okay. And they're like, yeah, this is what, what he wants. He would vanguard the change order process. He would say, Mark, I want to make sure you're clear on the scope because once, once we press play on this whole sequence of things that are going to happen, any changes that you make to this screws up all the sequencing, the scheduling, the dates that we all lock in. They were super organized guys. And he says, I just want, he, and he was like, you're more than welcome to make a change, but it's going to cost you a shit ton of money. Okay. Now he didn't say shit ton, but he literally would look at them in the eye and say, it is going to be outrageously expensive for you to do any changes. So if you're thinking about a change, let's talk about it now and just put it into the contract and then we can plan for it. That way you don't have to pay twice as much for the change. Okay. Um, Sean, is 50% deposit good standard when getting customers into a contract? Depends on your state, Sean. You know, I think California, they they it's 10% or a thousand bucks or some shit like that. I don't know. This is why you have to have an attorney draft your contracts. Uh, my my feeling is this, the money is better in my bank account than it is in their bank account. All right. So one of the beautiful things about the trades, you guys, is you can use other people's money to fund the work and build your business. So that's why I personally like a 50% deposit to get on the schedule, because if I'm bidding my job at a 50% gross profit, I'm getting 50% up front, which means I'm getting all the money up front for labor and material. Okay. And then the last payment, that 50% is all gross profit that goes to overhead. If you're not a fucktard when you manage your money. Okay. And you're not robbing Peter to pay Paul and shit like that. So, um, so anyway, yeah, I would, uh, talk to your attorney. Carolyn Chromines is a great option for you, um, at the subcontractor institute.com or something like that. Facebook user, do you have a, the schedule of events for Florida? Uh, I think it was posted in battleground recently, just a rough, uh, a sketch on it. Uh, I don't know offhand, honestly, I have such a great team, you guys, that I'm just showing up, um, and hanging and bringing the heat. <laughs> so, um, I'll, I'll just be told where to be. <laughs> All right. Uh, other questions. How can I help you guys? I got about 15 more minutes. Cause then I got to hit the road. I got to go help my wife tear down a bunch of jumps at the barn. She's teaching a lesson right now. Um, Rich Lee. What's up, buddy? Trying to plan my flights. Awesome, man. At Sean, we can get a third, then do a third and a third, start the work 66% before we swing a hammer. Yeah. Mark, like I said, every state's different. Um, and guys, it also depends on, on the, um, the frequency of jobs that you have. Okay. Like as a painting contractor, our average job might be seven to 10,000 bucks, five to 10,000 bucks. All right. I'm good getting 50% up front and 50% on the last day. I don't have to have all these progress payments because it's like a three day job, you know? Um, but if you're going to be on a project, if it's a $300,000 job, um, you know, I would, uh, you know, I, I'd work in some payment terms and conditions that you honor that give you cash flow every couple of weeks. Okay. Um, what are you to do when a, what are you do? What do you do when a customer pay with credit card and stop the payment, pick up the phone and call the customer and ask what's going on. Okay. Um, I, again, I don't know the scenario. Um, you know, could be just a simple misunderstanding. It could be that they, you know, 
Now, if you don't have a fucking paper trail and a contract and all that other stuff, you're going to have a really hard time fighting that when they do a stop payment. Um, renovation. What should I expect to pay someone like your rat? It's Roz, Roslyn. It's short for Roslyn. Um, it depends. Depends what you want to have that person do. Okay. Um, I'm not going to answer because that's, you know, Roz's department and it's private to her. But what I will tell you is that, uh, when you find the right person, they're worth it. Okay. Um, just like any position in your company. Jose Netravas is already people often asked if I'm licensed on my trade. Does my sales tax permit qualify as a license on a landscape? I don't know. It depends what your state says. So check this out. There's this thing called Google. You pull it up on your phone and you go landscaper requirements state of boom or do landscapers in state blank require licensing <laughs> so um I, yeah i don't i don't know and guys when i it's it's funny i get asked these questions about sales tax and this and that and blah blah and if you're on here enough you know i say i don't know a lot because um i think who not how who do i know that knows this answer not how do I figure out this answer? Okay. Work smart guys. I appreciate the question, Jose, but I'm just saying like, just go to Google or call your CPA or your attorney or whatever it is. Um, it says no, but people ask that. Well, then you just say, Hey, you know, there's no licensing required in our state, but we, we do all of our ongoing training and continue in education in different areas of the business and safety and things like that. I used to get asked that in Illinois when I had the painting business, we didn't have to be licensed. So people would go, Hey, are you licensed? And, and I said, uh, if it was required in the state of Illinois, we would be. And if they had a process, we would be, but it's not, you know, but we are this and we do this and we do this. And, you know, we play by all the rules that are here. Um, yeah, Roz just said, uh, depending on their specialty, you could find someone as little as 15 an hour and some are 70 an hour. Remember that VAs don't work a full hour day, eight hour day. They might work two or three hours. Or I mean, like I said, Roz started with me at, <clears throat> I think it was a five hour a week package that, that Roz sold me when I found her on LinkedIn. And let me also say this for anyone looking to hire a VA. Um, it's obviously worked out really well, but I had no idea how to utilize Roz when I hired her. I just kind of knew I needed one, but I didn't know what that looked like. And Roz was really patient. It was probably a good year before I started to have the light go on of, wow, all the possibilities. <laughs> so, um, so be willing, you find somebody of great character, you know, play the long game with them. Um, all right. Yeah. And Roz is, uh, putting some things in there about the VA stuff. All right. But got about 12 minutes left guys. Other questions. How can I help your business? If you didn't catch the beginning of this, go back. I talked a little bit about the importance of getting off the hamster wheel in your business. And I also talked about what you see on the bottom of the screen there, our event in Florida. Strong Leader Live, go to thecontractorfight.com forward slash strong. Um, all right, other questions. I'm just scrolling back up to see if I missed anything. Um, which I'm not. <clears throat> Would you recommend buying as for Google for your business? Huh? I don't understand the question, James. Uh, Lifely and burn. How fast should I grow my company without getting overloaded? One job at a time as profitable as you can. Okay. 
one job at a time. I Somebody asked me the other day, how do I scale? I hit the word scale, but they're like, how do I scale my business? I go, you win one job at a time, just like you win the Super Bowl, guys. You win week one. You win week two. Might get your ass kicked on week three. You regroup. You learn some lessons. You take the field in week four. You get another win. Okay? You keep chipping away. Uh, would you recommend buying ads? Not unless you have a marketing strategy in place and you know who your ideal client is. Don't spend one fucking penny on ads. If you have not taken at least, uh, you're, you're going to shit when I say this, at least a month to figure out who your ideal client is. Okay. I say a month because you don't know what I know. You're going to have to figure it out on your own. Go to YouTube, go to Google, uh, go to Google, go how do I find my ideal client for my business? And you will get 40 trillion articles. Um, and I don't mean to be a smart ass here, James. What I'm saying is most contractors that throw money at ads, piss their money away. And then they're bitching about how they don't have any money and they're still in the hamster wheel and they can't buy fucking groceries or fix a flat tire on their truck. Okay. Because they're wasting God tons of money on, on marketing. That's not working because their messaging isn't right. Okay. Dana earlier in here was talking about his website and stuff. Okay. Guys, don't build a website if you don't know who your ideal client is. Now your ideal client's going to change over the years, but you're going to have something, you got to have something to start with. Okay. Um, who asked the question about how do I get in touch with the project manager for a big project? Uh, Protex, that's that's an okay start. But that's demographics. I'm talking behaviors, ideal client behaviors, okay? Um, which I won't go into here. But those that are in battleground, make sure you're on the Friday calls in March because you know I'm I'm doing a deep dive with individual battleground members and we're breaking down their whole marketing plan and we're actually talking and coaching about all this, everything from your brand promise to your unique selling proposition to how to uh, how to find out who your ideal client is, all that stuff. Um, somebody asked about, hi, Tom, how can I get in touch with the project manager for a big project? See this thing? See this? Not the beautiful picture of my queen and me, but you, you go and you call the company that's building the big project. Hi, can you tell me who your project manager is for the job on one, two, three main street, or you show up and you go to the job site and you go to the trailer on the job site. And you go, Hey, who's in charge? Okay. Like, again, I don't mean to be a smart ass, whoever asked that question, but for the love of God, be resourceful. You guys, like if your balls were on fire and you needed to know where a fucking fire extinguisher was or a bucket of water, you'd probably figure it out. Yet when it comes to the, I don't know what to say to a GC or how do I, you fucking, you, you find a way. What if you didn't see, this is what drive. And that's why I'm asking who this person is and how old you are. Cause I started my business when we didn't have fucking Facebook, the internet wasn't what it is now. All right. It, it took legwork. You had to actually get off your fucking ass. Okay. You had to get off your fucking ass and find a way. And this is what pisses me off about contractors. And God damn it, Mark, you fucking jinxed me, you asshole. All right, I love you, brother. All right, Mark's like, Tom's calm tonight. And then my fucking fuse gets lit, all right? Because you guys, you're, you're the... <sighs> you wonder why you don't have more success when the truth is you're lazy as fuck, the majority of you, when it comes to growing your business and finding a way to win. See, you, a lot of you guys are going, oh, hashtag FW, I'm an FW, buy our fucking swag that says FW. You're not a fucking FW. You're a fucking piece of shit, okay? Because an FW doesn't need to ask, how do I find the project manager on a job? They fucking find a way. They fucking find a way. What if you couldn't ask me? What if you didn't have a, a fucking Facebook group? What if you didn't have Google? What the fuck would you do? All right, open your fucking mouths. 
and grow a fucking pair of balls and quit and get over yourself and quit thinking you guys are all so fucking important. Oh, I'm too special to fucking prospect and go out there and hunt. All right? Fuck. I got shit tons of money coming into my world every fucking day. And you know what I do every day? I fucking hunt. You know what I did on Saturday? I opened up our database. I went, I filtered our, our CRM to people that have spent X amount of dollars or more with our company in the past three or four years. I went to the last page, meaning the oldest ones. And I, there were a bunch of names that I didn't recognize. And I actually opened up my email and I went, Hey Joe, I wanted to personally reach out and see how marketing boot camp is working for you. I see that you purchased it a couple years ago. Give me some feedback. Let me know what's going on. Hey, so-and-so, I saw that you came to Mile High in 2021. Curious what you've implemented since then. Hit me back when you get a minute. Okay, it's fucking boots on the ground, you guys. But you guys are all, you, this pisses me off because we're in the fucking show season right now. You got JLC Live coming up and I'll just use that one as the fucking easy target. In Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island, there's going to be 5,000 contractors walking around, whacking off to all the fucking tools but nobody's in the breakout sessions where you learn how to fucking make money because you guys think it's about the fucking tools. You think it's about the fucking big ass truck that you can't fucking afford. But when it comes to putting in the work to hunt and plant seeds and build relationships and be fucking resourceful. All right. You guys are a bunch of dumb motherfucking pussy bitches. All right. God damn me. Why am I so mad? Okay, if you're a first timer here, here's why I'm so mad. Because every day, this is where we should cue the Sarah McLaughlin music for the pets that are in shelters that are dying. Okay. <laughs> every day, another contractor is fucking his family over. But with your help, we can save him and we could save his children. Okay, that's why I'm pissed, you guys, because this is friendly fire. Okay, this is friendly fire. But you got time for Pornhub, you got time for fucking Netflix. Okay, you got time to fucking, you know, go to the fucking tool website and jack off to all the fucking shit that you think is going to make you money. You'll bitch. No, here's what it is. And then you'll do this. You'll find a way to buy a fucking truck that you can't afford or a piece of equipment that you use twice a year and you spend 40 grand on it and you got a fucking outrageous payment, okay? And you don't know how to fucking market your business, but you're going to bitch that Battleground is too expensive or the event in Florida is too fucking expensive and all this other shit, okay? Guys, you want, you, you, you want a tip? Don't spend shit on your business that ain't going to make you money. I'm tired of you guys screwing yourselves over. Because I get and the team gets dozens of emails a week and DMs a week. My wife's going to leave me. No shit. My wife's going to leave me. She says, I need to shut my business down or she's going to fucking divorce me. <laughs> Your kids don't know you. Not to mention you're fat as fuck now too. You're a fat piece of shit with plumber crack. All right. Oh, I used to play. I, I see guys like this all the time. Like you go to the gym now. When you go to the gym, you, you lift you bulk up a bit because you're too fucking lazy and undisciplined to eat right. Cut the alcohol out and fucking, you know, do a couple workouts a day and do a 75 hard and eat right and stuff and actually lose your fucking gut. All right. Here's a tip. If you're taking a shower. I'm washing my hair. Okay and you look down in the shower and you can't see your junk, you're too fucking fat, okay? So you burn your fucking health to the ground. You don't have any fucking money in the bank. Every winner's the same goddamn story with your business. Your marriage isn't what it should be, all right? You can't afford shit for your kids if they even know you. Now listen, I know there's, a, there's guys in here, people in here, you're great parents. I love you, okay? Keep doing you, all right? But holy shit, the majority of contractors in this world are underachieving in every fucking area of their life. Okay? But, oh, it's Biden's fault. 
or it's the inflation, the recession. No, fuck that. We don't participate in that shit. I've made shit tons when shitheads are in the office and I've made shit tons when decent ones are in the off in office. Okay. Cause I only care about who the fuck is in my house. I don't care who's in the white house. All right. I don't care where you live. I don't care what the population of your city is. I don't care how many fucking illegals are fucking in your area. And you're going to bitch about, uh, oh, you know, like I'd sell more if we weren't for the illegals. No, you'd sell more if you weren't such a little pussy ass bitch. Okay. That's the truth. All right. Because you're unwilling to put the work in and get uncomfortable and do what it takes and find a way to be an FW, find a way to win. All right? So the shoe fits, wear, wear it. Okay? If it applies, fucking do something about it or don't ever watch me again. Unsubscribe from all my shit and don't ever fucking bother me again with your fucking whine and ass bitch emails and shit like that. All right? This is why I get so amped up, guys, because this means something to me. It means a lot more to me than making money. I'll tell you that. Okay? I don't have to work as fucking hard as I do. Our team doesn't have to work as hard as we do. But we do it because we care about each individual life. And sometimes we, we feel like we care about your success and your fucking marriage and health and your employees and your bank account more than you do. Now, let me say this while I'm at it. If you've been consuming my stuff for any period of time for free and you've been applying it and getting value, I appreciate that. And I'm glad. Okay. I'm glad. Okay. It's time to jump into the paid programs because you're, you're like barely scratching the surface. A lot of guys are like, oh, we're not buying your Shinfu sales training videos. They're too expensive, but I, I learned it all on your free stuff. Okay. Guys, <clears throat> if I go into, into YouTube and go how to improve my golf swing and I watch a fucking video and then I go play golf, I'll probably get a little bit better. All right. Or I could go, I'm going to watch that video. I got some value there. I'm going to hire the fucking coach. I'm going to join the coach's program and then I'm going to get the real deal because when you're role playing with people that know what they're doing, okay, when you're swinging the club with a coach and other people that know what the fuck they're doing, you're going to move faster to the success you want. You're going to avoid a lot of mistakes, okay? <clears throat> so I appreciate it, okay? And listen, if you're in a spot that you just can't, that's fine. But if you've been implementing stuff, all right, on your own, oh my God, you're going you're gonna to explode your success when you actually have some skin in the fucking game and you're around people that think like me and think like our FWs, like Mark Bunker and others that are on here right now. All right. So just, well, it's too expensive. You know, it's 19 bucks a day. Fuck. All right. <clears throat> Let me scroll back up a minute. See, if, no, I'm not mad. I'm fired up. Okay. I know you're fucking with me, Jose. All right. But listen, I'm fired up, guys, because I want you to win. When's the last time you got this fired up about your, your own performance? About your own bullshit lies you tell yourself about why you're not more successful? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Any questions? <laughs> I still don't know who asked that question. I want whoever that is. I want, you to know, I care about you, whoever the hell you are. I care about you. I understand that you were just trying to get some help. Okay. But for the love of God, be resourceful. How do you think you should reach out to the, find the, who the project manager is? Okay. Again, if the fucking drug cartel had a gun to your fucking wife's head and said, if you don't find the name of the project manager on that project, I'm going to kill your wife by noon. You'll probably know who the fuck it is by 6.30 a.m. Okay? Roz, go ahead and drop a link to Battleground in there when you get a chance, please. <clears throat> um. I know I'm not for everybody, all right? 
But one thing you will always get in the fight, and those that are in battleground can tell you this, all right, you will always get the truth. Okay? Shit, there's people in the battleground that are fucking calling my ass out on the truth from time to time. Okay? Because it's that safe in there. Like, nobody's in the fucking doghouse and shit like that. Okay? It's like, we all want to be better, you guys. So we don't, we don't have time. We do not have time, okay, to dick around with our lives anymore. Okay? We don't have time. You know, one of the greatest blessings that my wife and I, one of the greatest things about our relationship is we both get to the point really quick because life's too precious to fuck around and beat around the bush. Okay? Those that have met the queen, you know she's the real deal. She's in your face. She'll probably rub you wrong the first time you meet her, okay, depending on the situation, all right? And she will tell you the, she will tell you the truth, all right, because she cares. And she's rubbed off on me for, for, through the years. She's made me better at that, believe it or not, getting to the point, not wasting time. Life is precious, all right? I, I have no desire to spend time with human beings that aren't willing to help themselves. And that's quite frankly what we find online a lot. In the online business world, marketing world, coaching world, you find people that are just like, ah, you know, I just want you to, you know, stroke me off and, you know, tell me I'm just going to be all successful and all this shit. No, you're going to have to fucking do the work. And when you're not doing, I mean, shit, battleground people, how many times do I go into battleground? It's probably at least once a month probably once a month, rarely twice. So I, I don't want to mean sound like it's all the time, but when I'm seeing something in battleground about bitching and whining and victim mentality, I go live and I call people out. I'm like, not necessarily by name, but I'm like, I'm seeing all these fucking posts. You guys bitching about the phone ringing, but you're not doing the UITs I've taught you to do. You're not doing the fucking warranty calls, both of which with their, which are free. None. Of, and, and then I, I get, I get these guys like, oh, I don't have any leads. Blah. I'm like, well, talk to me about your CRM. How many people do you have in your CRM? Well, I don't have a CRM. And you've been in fucking battleground for a fucking nine months and you still don't have a CRM? Fuck you. You don't deserve to have any leads then. Ugh. ASMR dreams. The stuff you teach only apply to construction. No, this is life. This is business. I speak to a lot of non... Um, what do you call it? Uh, construction type industries from time to time, do keynotes and workshops and things like that. So this is all personal development guys. And I hate that. That's an overused phrase too, but this is just like, do you want to get better or not? That's it. Do you want to get better or not? Here's how you get better. You get clarity on what you want. You identify the shit that needs to be done to move you closer to it each day. And you consistently do the shit each day. That's how you win in anything. Okay. All right. I've, I went 10 minutes longer. I got two more minutes. Two more minutes for one last question. Now, when you are in battleground and I'm coaching you on a call and you're on open coaching and things like that, and I'm interacting with you, when you come to our Strong Leader Live event down in Florida at the link on the screen and you meet me in person and stuff, one of the things that you're going to realize real quickly, because I hear it all the time, is they're like, wow, you don't bite. You're much more laid back in person. Okay, guys, I'm I, I'm a little direct, okay, but I'm also very loving because I care about you. All right, this here is to wake you up. You need to get woken up. We need to slap you around a little bit and pat you on the ass and get you into the community where we can love up on you. And we put our arms around you and tell you the truth, have your back, encourage you. I mean, guys, I, I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking of just the last month. Mark, I keep seeing your name on here, okay? <clears throat> The life issues that some of the people in battleground that are sharing in the group, okay, from like really bad, really, really bad shit, okay, to problems with kids that are hard, to marriages, to, oh my God, I just had my top guy leave me and took all my business. What do I do, guys? There's support, okay? <clears throat> There's support. But I can't support you if you don't fucking sack up and go in there. We can't help you to our full extent with the fanatical attention that we want to bring without you taking a chance on you. And what I find, and I'll end with this because I don't see more questions and I got to go help the queen. <clears throat> I usually 
know, I've done this long enough to know that when somebody is not pulling the trigger to jump into this community or come to this event that's on the screen, okay, it's simply this. They don't trust themselves. They don't trust it. Now, they'll mask it. They'll go, what am I going to get in Battleground and how are you going to help me? No, the real issue is they don't trust themselves to implement because they've been breaking promises to themselves their whole fucking life. And now they're being called in a community where they're expected to honor the commitments that they make to themselves if they would like the success they say they want to have. And they don't trust themselves, so they don't jump in. Just my two cents. I've only done this a few times. So with that, I got to go. Love you guys. Um. I'm going to go help the queen. If you have questions about the event, battleground, anything like that, email help at the contractor fight.com head of the contractor fight.com forward slash strong. Join us in person down in Florida and uh, let's get better together guys. Love you. Appreciate you. I'm out. <laughs>